Hi, welcome to ComsPH and today we will talk about flowchart. So, ano nga ba pag sinabing flowchart? So, flowchart is a diagrammatic representation of an algorithm. So, sa computer science, pag sinabing algorithm, it is a set of instructions in solving problems executed by computers. Pero hindi lang computers ang merong algorithm. Even human also have algorithms. Flowchart is very helpful in writing program and explaining program to others. So, bakit siya nagiging helpful? Kasi nga, siya ay visual representation ng sequence of steps and decisions na kailangan para magawa or ma-perform yung ating mga process. So, kung tayong mga programmer, pag um, in-explain natin yung yung program na gagawin natin sa kapwa programmer, mas madali siya kapag meron tayong flowchart. And even, kung kailangan nating i-explain yung program sa users, sa end users, mas madali nilang maiintindihan kung tayo ay gagamit ng flowchart. So, this is an example of flowchart. So, mapapansin nyo, meron siyang mga symbols. So, meron niyang mga ibig sabihin. So, the symbols used in flowchart. The first one is the flow line. It is used to indicate the flow of logic by connecting symbols. So, kinokonect niya yung other symbols and dinadirect niya kung saan yung susunod na step. The next one is the terminal or the stop or start. So, it is used to represent start and end of flowchart. So, kapag gumawa kayo ng flowchart, ang una nyong gagawin or ang una nyong idodraw ay yung terminal. Kasi, siya yung ginagamit na sinasabi na eto yung start ng program or eto yung start ng process. Okay? Next is uh, the input and output. So, it is used for input and output operations. So, kung halimbawa ang gagawin yung program ay hihingi kayo ng input kay user or meron kayong i-output na text, isha-show na text, this is the symbol that you will use in your flowchart. So, mamaya mas may itindihan nyo siya kasi uh, meron tayong mga example. Next one is the processing. Sorry for the typographical error. So, this used for arithmetic operations and data manipulations. Ano pag sinabing arithmetic operations? So, dyan yung addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and other, er and other data manipulations. So, sa processing yun. And then, the session. Sorry for the... <laughs> Uh, typographical error. So, decision. So, D-E-C-I-S-I-O-N. Ang correct spelling. It is used to represent the operation in which there are two alternatives. True and false. Ginagamit tong symbol na to pag meron tayong step na, uh, na answerable by true or false or yes or no. Okay? So, mamaya makikita natin siya, no? And then, the on-page connector used to join different flow line. Um, kung halimbawa, meron kasi tayong step na babalik tayo sa step na yon, So, pwede natin gamitin tong on-page connector. Okay? And then, off-page connector is used to connect flowchart portion on different page. Halimbawa, meron kayong ginawang flowchart. Tapos, hindi na siya kasha sa, sa first page. Isusulat mo siya sa second page. So, gagagamit ka ng off-page connector sa first page and then meron ka uling off-page connector sa taas ng second page na pinapakita na yun yung kadugtong nung iyong nasa front page. Okay? Or nasa first page. How to plan and draw a basic flowchart. So, these are the steps na pwede yung maging guide sa pag to develop or sa paggawa ng basic flowchart. The first one is to define your purpose and scope. So, ano ba yung gusto mong ma-accomplish? For example, gusto mong gumawa ng flowchart sa paggagawa ng Gmail account. So, kailangan alam mo yung every detail from start to end. And yung gagawin mo na flowchart ay um, 
masasimplify siya for your intended audience. So, kahit nag-research ka ng detailed kung paano gumawa ng Gmail account, pag yun ay ginawan mo na ng flowchart, mas magiging madali na siyang maintindihan ng yung intended users. Next is to identify the task in chronological order. So, syempre, pag nagawa ka ng flowchart, kailangan nasa tama pagkakasunod-sunod siya. So, dito, pwedeng mag-conduct ka ng interview. Uh, gamitin natin yung example natin kanina sa paggagawa ng Gmail account. mag interview ka ng iba't ibang tao kung ano yung mga paraan kung paano sila nagawa ng Gmail account. So, pwede na experience mo kung paano mo siya ginawa. So, from those um, interviews or observation, makikita mo kung ano yung pwede mong gawin na tamang pagkakasunod-sunod doon sa flowchart na gagawin mo. Next is to organize them by type and corresponding shape. So, once na nailatag mo na yung step-by-step procedure na gagawin mo sa flowchart mo, ngayon, kailangan mo naman alamin ano ba yung tamang shape para sa kanya. Halimbawa, sa step 1, ang kailangan mo ay input or output. Sa step 2, may decision making. Merong pwedeng yes or true. Merong no or false. Or, ito ba ay process? Meron ba tayong ipaperform na arithmetic operation para sa step na ito? So, rectangle ba yung gagamitin natin? So, yun yung susunod na gagawin mo once na nakuha mo na yung step by step na procedure. Para alam mo na kung ano yung shape na gagamitin mo para sa flowchart mo. Next is to draw your chart. So, alam mo na yung gusto mo ma-accomplish. Alam mo na yung step by step procedure. Alam mo na yung corresponding shape sa bawat step. So, pwede ka nang mag-draw ng chart mo. So, it's either uh, magdodraw ka using your hands or pwede kang gumamit ng iba't ibang website para makapag-draw ng chart. So, meron tayong smart draw and meron tayong lucid chart. So, ilalagay ko yung link sa baba kasi meron akong ibibigay sa inyo na activity and pwede nyo siyang gawin doon. Last is to confirm your flow chart. So, dito, check mo kung tama ba yung step-by-step um, procedure na ginawa mo para ma-accomplish mo yung iyong purpose, which is yung makapaggawa halimbawa ng Gmail account. So, pwede na ikaw, i-check mo siya sa sarili mo, or pwede mo siyang ipacheck doon sa mga in-interview mo na kung paano sila nagawa ng kanilang Gmail account. So, gagawin mo to para malaman mo if meron ka bang mga na-miss na steps para ma-accomplish yung iyong purpose. Okay, so let us have an example. So, itong example ng flowchart na to ay um, yung everyday life natin, no? So, for example, should I do my homework now? So, meron tayong symbol dito na diamond, which means decision, no? Answerable by yes or no ang nasa loob ng decision natin na symbol. So, do you have homework? No. So, meron tayong flow line dito. Kapag no ang sagot, maybe you are lying. So, meron siyang flow line na papunta dito sa direction din ng yes. Okay? So, if the answer is yes, meron tayong panibagong decision. So, may panibagong question. Is it due in less than 12 hours? So, kung halimbawa, ah, meron ka pang 42 hours left. So, the answer is no. There is another process. So, you can watch TV. You can also play mobile games. And you can surf on social media. And then, babalik tayo dito sa decision natin. Is it true in less than 12 hours? Eh, meron ka pang 24 hours. So, no pa rin. You can watch TV. You can play mobile games. And you can surf on social media. Balik tayo dito. Meron ka na lang 10 hours. So, ang sagot ay yes. So, ang yes natin ay meron tayo ditong terminal which uh, means start. So, you may now start working. So, I hope you get that. If you have some question, you can comment down below or you can message in our group chat. Next example. 
What kind of TV should I watch? So, meron tayo ditong terminal, stay at home, and then watch TV. Yung process. Meron tayo ditong decision ulit. Watch comedy. If yes, you will watch Big Bang Theory. If no, you will watch Thriller. Yes, kung yes ang sagot mo, you will watch Breaking Bad. If no, you will watch Mystery. If yes, you will watch American Crime Story. If no, then turn off the TV and then another pastime. Terminal. Example number three. So, you will read your temperature. So, start. This is terminal. This is start. So, you're telling that this is the start of your flowchart. Read temperature. If the temperature is less than 32, yes. Halimbawa, ang temperature niya ay 30 or 29. So, yes ang sagot. Print below freezing. So, it will show a text na below freezing yung temperature na na-read. Kapag no, print above freezing. So, halimbawa, ang lumabas na result ay 33 or 34. So, isha show yung text na above freezing. And then, meron tayong flow line. End na siya ng flow chart. So, example number 4. Dito ay... Um, tutungo na tayo sa program. For example, you will create a program that will add two numbers. And gagawan mo yun ng flowchart. So, to start your flowchart, you will draw terminal and then you will put start showing that this is start of your program or your flowchart. Flow line. Meron tayo ditong rectangle which is our process. So, you will declare your variables. Pag sinabing variables, parang sinasabi niya ay container. Paano yung container? Halimbawa, meron kang kape, asukal, at creamer. So, meron kang container na doon nakalagay yung kape, meron kang container na doon nakalagay yung asukal, meron kang container na merong creamer. So, ginagamit yun para hindi siya kalat-kalat. No? So, sa programming, ginagamit natin yung term na variable. So, dito sa program na to, meron tayong tatlong variables or meron tayong tatlong container. Yung N1, which is your first number. Yung N2, which is yung second number. And then, yung ating sum. Okay? Meron ulit tayong flow line. So, meron tayong ditong parallelogram na shape. Hindi lang masyadong kita kasi parang mukha pa rin siyang rectangle. Pero siya ay parallelogram. Yung parang nakaside na na square. So, it will read N1 and N2. Ibig sabihin, babasahin niya or kukuhanin niya yung input ni user. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng shape na to. Halimbawa, um, nag-input si user ng 10, yun yung N1, and then yung second number, yung N2, ay 10 din. Meron tayong flow line. So, ang shape natin dito ay rectangle kasi process siya. We will perform arithmetic operation. So, sum, dapat to ay hindi arrow left. Dapat yan ay equal ha. Sum is equal to N1 plus N2. So, ang gagawin niya, ipagpa-plus niya si 10 at si 10 kasi yun yung in-input ni user. And yung answer niya ay ilalagay niya ngayon kay container na sum or kay variable na sum. So, ano yung na kay sum? 20. Flow line ulit. Meron tayo ditong parallelogram. Display sum. Ibig sabihin, i-output niya yung 20. And then, flow line ulit. Tapos, um, terminal na symbol and then stop. So, ibig sabihin, doon natatapos yung inyong program. So, I hope you get that. If you have some questions, you can comment down below or you can message in our group chat. Our next example. Example, you will create a program that will find the largest among the three numbers. Paano yun? Halimbawa, um, gagawa ka ng program, hihinga ng input si user ng tatlong number. 
For example, ang nilagay ni user ay 1, 2, and 3. So, ipiprint niya or output niya yung 3 kasi yun yung largest number. So, paano niyang gagawa ng flowchart yun? So, you will start a terminal. So, you will draw a terminal. So, that will show that this is the start of your program or your flowchart, flow line. So, meron tayong uh, rectangle or process. So, you will declare three variables. Bakit? Kasi di ba mag input ka ng tatlong number? So, dapat may tatlo kang container. So, ang ginamit ditong variable ay A, B, and C. So, don't worry kasi i-discuss natin sa mga susunod nating discussions yung variables. Okay? So, dito ang ginamit na variables or container ay A, B, and C. Flow line. Meron tayo ditong uh, parallelogram. So, it is an input-output na symbol. So, you will read A, B, and C. Ibig sabihin ng read A, B, and C, babasahin mo yung input ni user. And then, flow line. Meron na tayong decision na symbol. Is A greater than B? If true or yes, i-compare niya naman kay C. Is A greater than C? If yes or true, ibig sabihin, A yung pinakamataas, so ipiprint niya yung A. Ibig sabihin, print A, isa-show niya, ia-output niya yung A. Halimbawa, ang nilagay natin, A is equivalent to 5, B is equivalent to 4, C is equal to 3. A is greater than B, 5 is greater than 4, true. 5 is greater than 3, true. So, ang i-output natin ay A or 5. Next, is A greater than B? For example, ang input ni user ay 1, 2, 3. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, C is equal to 3. Okay? Is A greater than B? Is 1 greater than 2? False. Is B greater than C? 2 is greater than 3. Kapag true ang sagot, ang i-output niya ay B. E false ang sagot natin kasi ang B natin ay 2, ang C natin ay 3. So, B is greater than C ay false, ang ipiprint niya ay C, which is number 3. Okay? So, after nyo ma-print, stop na siya. So, these are my reference in creating this PowerPoint presentation. Again, if you have questions, please comment down below or message in our group chat. I will answer your questions. If you would like to request for a Google Meet or Zoom meeting to discuss this topic, please let me know. Again, I will put the link in the description video where you can create a flowchart for our next activities. So that's it. Thank you so much and I hope you learned a lot in this video. Bye!